Greetings and welcome. Welcome back to my followers and those who are just joining us. If you've missed any so far, go back to the very beginning, I would suggest, because uh, each part of the vlogs all match, uh, all match up. And you have to follow them one by one to really get the full story um, of where I am now today. Okay, 1994, Nottingham Home Pierpoint. Um, this time the World Championships is in England um, and it's the first time since 1981 uh, when it was last held in Ludington on the Warwick Raven. And uh, anyway, great expectations this year. And um, But before I go on to that, I'm just going to just quickly uh, mention uh, that uh, that year as well, um, or early on in the year, um, the Welsh manager, the new Welsh manager Doug Hornblow, tried quite desperately to arrange um, a World Championships in Wales. Um, we were hoping to get it on Eastock in Cardiff. That was the suggested venue, and um, we uh, invited the uh, Phipps uh, uh, to come along, and they, they come along and, and um, measured it out. But unfortunately, that year, there was an influx of um, a few other teams um, and that meant where, where there's normally 26, 27, 28 countries, the year in question, because we had to um, book it sort of a couple of years in advance, there were now 33 uh, um, uh, countries competing. So it did not make um, Eastock viable, which was a big shame because, you know, that would have suited the Welsh team, would have suited me personally because I spent my youth uh, on um, Eastock, and um, it, was, it would have been a great venue. Um, you know, uh, it'll go down in history as uh, uh, really a big lost opportunity because Doug uh, also, he had it all planned and everything. He was going to have a parade through uh, the centre of Cardiff, uh, into the city centre, and a, a presentation at the Cardiff Castle. Um, and if you've ever been to Cardiff and seen the castle, you see what I mean. It's you know it's quite grand, and it would have made a you know a great showcase for Welsh angling. However, it didn't come about, and um, you know as I said, fair dues to Doug, good businessman, good thinking brain, um, and it just didn't didn't it didn't happen, which was a shame. Anyway, coming back to uh, home pier point. Now, the thing is. We'd already been fishing in the home pier point. Uh, we fished it in a European Super Cup Championships with the Cardiff Nomads, you know, the same year. You know, and I really fancied the Welsh team chances of a medal, you know, after our team finished fourth, you know, in that, in that uh, Super Cup. Nevertheless, gone were the days of John Mayers where the team would decide the team tactics. Doug, the new captain, wanted a stronger opinion in the way we fished. Now, to say that Doug and I had arguments uh, over the team and tactical talks would be a little bit of an understatement. I just knew it was all going to go wrong. <laughs> um, you know, I, I felt Doug was going down the wrong blind alley in his tactics and even in the team selection. You know, considering that Doug didn't take up match fishing until his 40, 40th birthday, you know, in his 40s, you know, and, and um, you know, obviously with his strong opinions, I just couldn't get approval, really, of any of my views anymore, you know. And leaving Clive Roberts out was the biggest mistake, you know, because um, Clive, he, he had a great performance in the European Super Cup. He, he comes second overall, but he, he dropped him, you know. Anyway, I also found out afterwards that Clive um, said that Doug had other plans concerning himself, conceivably fishing himself in the Welsh team and in the World Championships the following year. But you know, I took that as a pinch of salt. I thought maybe that's a bit of sour grapes. Hmm, let's we'll see what happens now. Anyway, setting our differences apart, Doug and I, um, I fished a good match on the first day, you know. Um, just as I thought, you know, fishing a waggler further out than a pole, uh, I would catch plenty of roach and skimmers. Um, especially after the initial bombardment, you know, ground bit that went in, into this drawing course. You know, in fact, I was lay, lying in sixth place on the first day. Um, and, you know, I was really looking forward to the second day. As I said, bear in mind that um, the individual is over the two days. 
Anyway, uh, however, <laughs> the second day, it completely turned off. The whole venue, you know, it's it, like just like a tap, it just stopped. Um, and all the weights uh, that we were catching, you know, a new tactics come into play. And uh, the tactic on the day, and I don't know whether we were, as a team, were a bit slow to pick this up, but they were using neat, sticky bloodworm. And that was the order of the day. Unfortunately, it's a tactics that uh, didn't allow, you know, the, our team, um, you know, uh, the chance of, uh, of doing any good. And, you know, in fact, um, you know, I fished well down my section, to be quite honest with you, because uh, it was something we hadn't practiced. You know, hindsight's a great thing in fishing. You know, if you could learn and, you know, if you knew um, the events afterwards and you could fish them again, obviously you would. But anyway, uh, another question as well um, at the time, it was suggested that uh, the cormorants, you know, there's been an explosion of cormorants uh, throughout the country and in particular on Home Pier Point. Um, you know, they reckon it uh, dilapidated the stocker fish uh, and over 200 birds were counted on the venue the previous week. You know, now whether this had a bearing on the catches, I don't know. I suppose we'll never know because it was not noticeable. Um, you know, however, I, no, I, I, let me rephrase that. I think that was quite noticeable because the fish were in pockets. You know, there were um, an angler or a couple of anglers together would catch a few and others wouldn't. So mm, that got me thinking the cormorants, possibly. Anyway, um, with, with it fishing hard, England and uh, that great manager, you know, Dick Clegg, probably, the, as, a, as I said before, the greatest manager ever England's ever had, he's now uh, proved to be unbeatable, you know. Uh, not only did they have the tactics completely right on both days, uh, and winning both days events, and guess what, Bob Nudd had his spot on again. His third gold medal, unbelievable, proving that, you know, at that time, not only were England the best in the world, but we also had the best anglers. And uh, as I say, Bob Nudd, fantastic, you know, three times world champion. You know, you just can't, you know, you, you just couldn't imagine it, you know, being so, uh, so good for him. Yeah, so... That was um, a great, it was a great match, great turnout of, of uh, people. I think there's a small video, uh, somebody done a homemade video. Uh, I think it's on YouTube, so I'll see, if I can find the link, I'll put it on, on the end of this um, vlog. But as I said, it was a great result with England winning with 92 points. Second uh, was well, France, you know, with 96. So they weren't that far behind, because obviously it's Bloodworm again. You know, France and Italy third, you know, all the, all the Bloodworm teams. You know, um, France had 96 and Italy had 117. But as I said, you know, Bob proving that he was the best in the world at, in that era. Uh, and he'd go down in history then, you know, as a three times winner. Um, and he had a draw, he had a massive winning weight, man. He had uh, eight, 8.500 kilos, you know. Second uh, angler on that, um, over that two days was Luxembourg angler uh, Schnock. He had, and he only had two kilo six hundred, so it was a big weight difference there. And then third was the French guy um, Charmot, and he had two point three. But as I said, it was a fantastic results for uh, England and uh, also, um, you know, as I say, for Bob Nutt. Um, I'll leave the results on the end so you can have a look. And me and Bob, you know, fantastic angler. Anyway. Uh, before I finish this uh, blog, I know it's a, another short one because, again, not much to really report, you know. Um, uh, I will be reporting on my individual matches. After this series, um, I decided that uh, uh, I, I've got so many memories that I, what I'll probably do is make a, a new vlogs of, um, of matches that I've fished over the years and where I've learned different methods. And I think it will be invaluable, you know, for, for people to listen to, I think, um, you yeah. They say age is creeping up on me now. I'm <laughs> 69. It won't be long now. I'll be 70, and uh, um, and I'm looking good, am I? <laughs> but uh, no, the thing is, my eyesight's going, and one thing or another, and I think you know, um, you know, because unfortunately, uh, 1993. Um, 
as I say, Kevin Ashurst, uh, I had a long word with, uh, chat with him afterwards, and he felt like that was his um, last World Championships. Um, he did say to me, you know, about, about the eyes, he said, uh, the worst thing for any match angler is when your eyes go, and you know, you've got to use glass and you can't see what you're doing. You know, and um, I think he, how oh, dead right he was, because obviously, you know, I've now experienced that in my older life. Uh, but I tell you what, what a champion. I mean, what a great, great angler. Probably the, the best angler ever England ever produced without actually winning a, a multiple of medals. You know, and I, you know, I dedicate this, uh, this part of the vlog to Kevin, a great, great man, great, great angler. It'd be many, many years after I saw Kevin, but uh, again, I'll talk about that later on in a later vlog.